Yeah, good afternoon. Today's uh, subject is the art of exploration. And before we get into the art, I'm kind of curious, Jean and Alyssa, if you could define for me, because it's something I'm very curious about myself, what is the definition of exploration here in the beginning of the 21st century? You know, what, we used to go out in search of lands and precious jewels and, and minerals and things. Those are all, all been found. And what, what is the definition of exploration today? So I'll start, you know, I think that there's never been a more exciting time for exploration. When I think about exploration, I think about discovery and illumination. And even though we're sitting in 2020, there's still so many unknown things, both about our earth, our universe, and everything that inhabits this planet that we're a part of. Yeah, I mean, totally to go along with that. I think that exploration is really just pushing any new boundaries, finding anything that we haven't discovered yet, really trying to push what we've learned, developing new technologies or going new places, discovering new things. Just as a whole, it's uh, learning more about the world we uh, the world we live in and the area we're in. So John, add to that, you know, your storied career with National Geographic, the things you've done with us as an explorer, you know, what it's really about is going to the front lines of the unknown. And there's still that great potential today in so many ways. Yeah, and, and, and I think what's fascinating, and Alyssa, you're part of this, I think so much of what we're going to explore in the, in the not so distant future and are exploring right now is in the deep ocean, is in space. And given the pandemic that we're experiencing now, I think scientists and science and technology have become the new ex explore explorers. I, mean, I think contact tracers and virus hunters are going to be the more, some, of the, some of the more interesting explorers going future. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know, I think obviously space has so much potential of things that we can explore. You know, obviously we're looking at going back to the moon, going to Mars as we continue building our space program. And, you know, despite everything going on in the world and everything that has gone on, you know, we're still pushing space exploration. We still have astronauts on the International Space Station. We're still making progress in space. So it's so good to see that continuing. Yeah, and I Another exciting trend is that we're using space exploration and space technologies to help us understand our Earth, including our oceans. So it couldn't be a more exciting time. And, and Jean, explain for me what is the art of exploration? <laughs> well, you know, I'll just repeat what I said before. <laughs> I mean, I, I do really think it's going to those front lines of where things are unknown. And that, by the way, still today, can be in a local community or that can be in a really remote place. Exploration takes place all around us. And you know, in recent months, we're, we've come out of quarantine in different communities. And I think during that time in quarantine, many individuals, including myself, began to feel like explorers, really understanding and taking careful note of the world around us. Well, you know, I've had very good fortune uh, in part because of my affiliation with National Geographic. I've traveled 90 countries. We've made films on every continent, but I'm a big believer that you don't have to travel halfway around the world to find exploration nor adventure. I think we can find that in our own backyards, which is really important, and especially, especially right now. But and Alyssa, I want to I want to know how do you define the Mars generation? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I definitely think that we're at a time of being the Mars generation, you know, even though it wasn't labeled, I feel like we did have somewhat of like a moon generation, you know, we had so many people who that were able to witness uh, man walking on the moon and all of these incredible events that fueled such a love for space and passion for what was going on in the space industry. And I think now we've kind of shifted and now we have such excitement talking about Mars, you know, you see it everywhere, whether it's on commercials, TVs, movies, TV shows, it's kind of everywhere everywhere at the moment, talking about Mars, getting people to Mars. So I feel like that's kind of a defining moment of us saying, you know, we are in this Mars generation of constantly talking about it, building excitement for it, and hopefully that will be enough to actually fuel us to actually get there. One really simple question for you, Alyssa, is how long does it take to get to Mars? <laughs> Yeah, right now with the current technologies that we have, so the mission to Mars is going to be about six months to actually get to Mars. Uh, obviously, as technology progresses, we're going to reduce that time, uh, building new engines, faster engines, and that kind of thing. But for those first missions, we'll have to endure those six months. <laughs> six months traveling. Wow. Correct. Jean, any interest in going to Mars? 
Oh man, I would so sign up for that if I could. But you know, I do want to go back and say very earthbound explorers are really using space. We have a great National Geographic explorer, Sarah Parkak, who is a space archaeologist. She uses technology from satellites to help identify some of the most at risk uh, ancient places on planet Earth and get them protected and preserved. And to me, it's a great example of a really old discipline meeting the latest technology to solve for things. And we're seeing that across our classes of explorers year after year, that kind of creative thinking about how we take some of the older and scientific disciplines and really blend them together with what technology can allow us to do. And Alyssa, I watched, I watched your TED talk. Both, both each of you have, uh, have short lists of, uh, that, I, that I really like. Alyssa, you, you, your, your list had, had three kind of to-dos on it. Do you, do you recall what they are? Yeah, no, definitely. The first one was to find your out of this world dream because I always think it's important to find whatever you're truly interested in. Uh, the second one was that we are all one because kind of like you, you know, giving the gain the opportunities to travel and see the world has been super inspiring. And I think, you know, space and here on earth, you know, there are so many ways that we're able to unite. And the third was just to support others with their dreams because with all of these big plans that we all have, we can never do them alone. So at least finding someone to support you. And, and Jean, you, 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 your book is what, Be Fearless? Be Fearless, Five Principles for a Life of Breakthroughs and Purpose. And I would say out of that are my three things. Make a big bet, be bold and take risks. And today more than ever, let urgency conquer fear to drive towards new big ideas. Yeah, I, I like that. I like the last one, especially. I, I, I said in my little introduction that, uh, that I'm a big fan of mentors and mentorship. Jean, did you have a mentor when you were growing up? You know, I had countless mentors, but a few that were super, super close. And in fact, one of them was my sixth grade teacher that I'm still good friends with to this day. We just talked yesterday on the phone and keeping up with her during this time. Um, but, you know, really, honestly, to a person, my mentors empowered me and gave me opportunities I otherwise would never have had. I was the youngest of four kids raised by a single mom. And because people reached out and made their time, and in some cases, their resources available to me, it changed my life. I'm a big fan of mentoring. Great. And, and Alyssa, same for you. I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're young, but uh, I'm assuming that there, you've had some really good role models to follow. Right, of course. I mean, definitely when you know, you're looking to achieve something, especially as a kid, it's so important to talk about your dreams and your goals because you never know where opportunities are gonna come from. You never know where someone's gonna reach out and wanna help mentor you, mentor you or give you some advice. And so it was definitely important in terms of, you know, me talking about my dream and my interest of going to space one day. And that has really kind of helped in so many different ways. And whether it's, you know, just an astronaut talking about their journey and what they did to achieve their dreams or other people giving me advice about things that I should probably go into or look into that could possibly help in the selection process. So along the way, there's been, you know, like you said, so many people that can help, but it's all about being vocal about it to actually get that help to actually achieve your dreams. That's great. Well, I, I, I mentioned I had a couple mentors. One was someone that Gene is familiar with, I'm sure, uh, but he's, he's, he's a polar explorer with, with a long National Geographic reputation named Will Steger. And mm -hmm. I, my first assignment for National Geographic was, Geographic was to go to, with Will to Antarctica for, for the dog sled expedition that crossed Antarctica. And what I learned from, from him was so vast, but he had learned from others. I, and then that was the great thing, and especially at an institution like National Geographic. You, you get introduced, and then once you're introduced, you, you do the same for others. It's a, it's a really great uh, ladder for, for a, a lot of us. Uh, and, and Jean, did, do, you, do you have an expo exploration hero out there? I mean, you've been around the geographic for quite a while and you, you kind of have met everyone. I know Jane Goodall wrote the introduction to your book. Um, yes, what a privilege that was. And I might say her main message in that forward that she wrote in my book was basically that there's never been a better time to be fearless than right now. Fearless in our exploration and in building solutions for the world. Um, I can't say I have one favorite. Certainly Jane is just, you know, really amazing. But to be honest with you, John, 
I'm just super jazzed by the next generation of explorers. We have emerging explorers and the way they're looking at the world differently. And our work in the last decade has been to make sure that our explorer class looks like the world. So today they're more diverse than ever before. And the work they're doing for us is in country. So we're not just taking a bunch of people from the US out across the world. These are people from India and places around Africa. And I could go right down the line. And that really has changed. It's changed all of us in terms of widening our perspectives uh, and having a new appreciation for, for sort of the local view of how the world works. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I certainly remember when much of the reporting in National Geographic emanated out of Washington, D.C., and it was a lot of men. And yeah. now one of my happiest days at National Geographic was when they sent me up to meet with a, a tech person. It was a young woman, and she had a mohawk and a bunch of earrings in her <laughs> ear. And I thought, this is the new, new National Geographic. But Hey, John, we call ourselves a 132-year-old startup. And, yeah. you know, Fearlessness is in our DNA, and we want to just keep innovating. Yeah. Alyssa, what, what, what grade in, in school are you? Uh, I just finished my freshman year of college studying astrobiology. So hopefully with that, wanting to, you know, look for signs of bacterial life, uh, learn, more, we'll learn more about Mars, see what we can actually do with Mars, and, you know, hopefully help uh, all the benefits that we have in space and try to bring some of those benefits back to Earth, whether it is jobs, technologies, or new discoveries. So you could actually be one of these virus hunters that we talked about earlier. You could, you could go to space and, and look for cures for cancers and, uh, and other viruses. Right. Find, find the new bacteria on Mars and see if it'll fix our problems here. Yeah, well, we would appreciate that. Um, and what's going to happen next year in school? You don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, definitely a lot of stuff is in the question, um, you know, still. So right now we're looking at going back face to face, but again, we don't know. But as long as, you know, we're still super grateful that we're able to continue our education, at least online, still have some classes, still working towards our degrees and, you know, still gaining the knowledge we need to know. Yeah. And, and Jean, somewhat related, I mean, has this pandemic, how, how has this pandemic affected the work that National Geographic is doing? Boy, you know, not surprisingly, our explorers everywhere and our photographers and our journalists are on stories. We've opened up emergency grants so that people around the globe who can't travel for their stories have the opportunity to tell the stories from where they are. But we're doing so much around science and around distance learning and education. We have more parents, students, and teachers with us today than ever before. And, you know, I pay a certain amount of attention. You have more grantees than ever before. I don't know. I don't know how you keep track of them all or keep track of all the work they do. Well, we have a great team. Oh, great. Um, and, and Jean, but the, the COVID-19 for yourself, you, you, have you literally been locked down at home? I have. I'm at a farm in the mountains of Virginia that we've had for 22 years. And I'm out every day really enjoying this beautiful planet. Fantastic. Well, thank you to Jean and to Alyssa. And thanks to the audience. We've been, we've been watching Collision from Home. <laughs>